Hey guys, in this video we're going to be doing a completely beginner modeling tutorial here in Blender. So if you're new to Blender or you know somewhat familiar with it but still want to get your feet a bit wet, this is the tutorial for you. So if you're new to my channel, my name's Josh, I do hard surface modeling. Um, there's two different types, you have hard surface and you have organic. Organic is, you know, more round things like fruit and humans and things like that. Hard surface is, you know, more mechanical pieces with hard surfaces, okay? Easy enough, that's what I do. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this tutorial here. I'm gonna make it as simple to understand as possible. So when you open Blender, you're gonna have this default screen right here. There's nothing crazy. If you press the T key, you'll have a panel over here. And if you press the N key, you'll have a panel over here. Don't worry about those panels. You do not really need them right now, okay? What we do need to do, however, is go up here to Edit, Preferences, and under Add-ons, you want to go here and type in B-O-O-L for Bool Tool. And this will basically turn on this, um, well, I'll show you later on. Just turn this on, save your preferences, and you'll see exactly what it does later. We do need it um, for our workflow. You can just keep that on all the time. That's what I do, unless I'm using Hard Ops, which is another add-on. But yeah, you can just keep that turned on, okay? So here in Blender, we have the default cube, and what I want to do with this default cube is I want to scale it down a bit, kind of compress it, okay? So I'm going to press S and then Y, and we can scale it down or up on the Y axis. Makes sense? Now, I'm just going to hold Control, and we can kind of snap it in increments like that, okay? And then if I want to scale it on the Z axis, well, I just press S, Z, and then hold Control to snap it up. Now... In Blender, most of the hotkeys are, are basically, you know, start with the first letter of the operation you're doing. So for scale, it's the S key. For grab, it's the G key. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really simple, right? You don't have to do anything. R for rotate. It's all just very uh, intuitive, makes sense. So what I want to do now is make a little bit more visual interest to this cube we just scaled down. So first of all, let me make this just a bit wider. So S and Y maybe right around here. Okay, so um, in Blender, okay, in Blender you have two different modes, and a lot of people will spend way too much time explaining both modes. I'll make it simple to understand. Object mode, which is what we're in by default, allows us to select the entire object, okay? We click it, and we can select the entire object. Now, if we want to do a bit more localized manipulations, you know, maybe moving faces or vertices around, we want to go into edit mode. And to go into edit mode, you can press the tab key. Now you're going to notice I actually have a pie menu for this because yours, when you tab, um, it might just automatically go into edit mode for you. I actually have a custom add-on, which is free, which allows me to quickly hop between different modes like vertex, face, and edge. And if you want to install that add-on, it is called machine tools. It's free. You just download the zip file and then you go up here to edit preferences and then click on install and select the zip file and then when you tab you can actually choose the mode very quickly but you don't need to have it I just want to mention that's what I use so what I want to do now is I want to go into edge mode because I want to select one of the edges so we're going to tab into edge mode and um, you can also select them up here if you want very easy so once you're in edge mode what I want to do is I want to basically bevel all four of these edges right here okay now to select multiple edges you can hold the shift key really simple right but there's an even easier way to do this if you want to select all the edges of the same exact length and direction you can press Control, alt and left click and it will select all of those that are the same length and the same direction got it makes sense so you could do it that way or you could just hold shift if you forget and select all of them manually. It doesn't matter either way. Now what I want to do is I want to press Control and B to bevel these edges right here, okay? You're going to notice something a bit interesting. Notice how this bevel is a little bit longer in this direction than it is in this direction. The reason for that is because we scaled this on the Y axis. And whenever we scale something in object mode, it actually saves that data. It tells Blender, hey, this is the size of how much we scaled it on the Y or the X or the Z axis, okay? 
And to view that information, if we go back into object mode with the tab key and we go to the end panel, under item you're actually going to see the scale value which is currently set to 0.674 for me on the y-axis. Now we want to tell Blender to interpret this as a uniform object with the whole scale applied and that way the bevel will not be biased, okay? So to do that we just press Control A and then go to scale. Simple enough and you're gonna see that y value now turns into 1 so Blender perceives this as a 1 by 1 by 1 scale, okay? So now if we tab back into edge mode and bevel these edges you're gonna see it bevels completely evenly, which is exactly what I want. Now, a lot of people would stop here, but you can actually make um, these, these bevels here, these single segment bevels. And by the way, if for some reason your bevel looks like this, you can just scroll down or scroll up just like that. So right now I have a one segment bevel. And what I like to do is I like to add bevels on top of those bevels, okay? Now a one segment bevel is a very special type of bevel that we call a chamfer. It's just a one segment bevel, easy enough to remember. So what I wanna do now is Control Alt click on these edges once again, and then Control B one more time. And if I scroll up a few segments, maybe to like six or something, you're gonna see, maybe eight instead. You know, the more round it is, the more smooth it'll be, so just uh, keep that in mind. So right here, I just wanna click, tab back into object mode, and you're gonna see it looks a bit smoother now. Pretty cool, right? So we can basically add bevels on top of bevels like this. It looks pretty decent, a lot softer, a lot more visually appealing. Now one thing I do want to mention, you might notice I have these nice edge highlights on my model. I get this question a lot. Um, basically what you can do is go up here to this drop down menu and turn on the cavity option. That's all you have to do. Okay, so now you're gonna see if we zoom in a bit, notice how this kind of looks like um, we have like this flat shading going on right here. Really easy to fix that. We just need to right click and then shade it smooth. And right now it looks absolutely terrible. And let me explain why this happens just so you kind of have the technical know-how. So in Blender, when you smooth something, it just smooths automatically. But we wanna tell Blender to smooth based off of the angles here. Right now, it's actually trying to smooth all the way over this hard edge here, and Blender can't really define how to properly smooth that out. It doesn't make sense to Blender. So we want to tell Blender, hey, smooth these in pieces, smooth this one separately, smooth this area separately, based off of the angles of the edges in the, on the object here. So to do that, if we just go into this little vertex data panel, this little green triangle is what I call it, if we go in here, we can expand this menu a bit, and then we go down to Normals. There's an option here for Auto Smooth, and if I turn this on, you're going to see it looks a lot better. This is basically saying, hey, if you have any angles that are above 30 degrees, then I want you to smooth them out separately, okay? So it's going to basically, um, you know, there's, there's a 90 degree angle right here, right? So since 90 degrees is above 30, it's going to smooth out these portions separately, ignoring this 90 degree edge so that way it doesn't actually smooth over it, okay? And you're going to notice if I went to like 91 degrees, for example, it would go back to the same thing we had before. So that's why we want to just, you know, usually the default value here of 30 is fine. And that's why we want to make sure we uh, turn on this auto smooth so that way it doesn't do some sort of crazy smoothing. So in general, like 95% of the time, 30 degrees is totally cool. You don't have to really change it that much. Sometimes you do, but we're not gonna be doing that in this video. Okay, cool, so now we have a pretty interesting looking shape here. Nothing complicated, but it does look you know, pretty interesting, all right? Now we're gonna have quite a bit of fun here. So um, let's go ahead and duplicate this piece. So to duplicate this, we can just press the Shift D key, really easy. Now to cancel this operation, we just right click, and now we're gonna have two separate pieces. We're gonna have one duplicate. What I wanna do with this duplicate piece is I wanna scale it down inwards, okay? So if I were to just press the S key, and by the way, if you wanna go into top view, you can just press the tilde key on your keyboard and then go to top. And what I wanna do is I wanna scale this down and I can't really see it right now, so what I could do is go into wireframe mode up here, or just press the Z key to go into wireframe. We'll just go up here. 
And you're going to see if I scale this down, it works, right? But notice how this area is a bit wider than this area here. So instead what I want to do is I want to scale in evenly, okay? And to do that, you just press the Alt S key instead of the S key. So now what we can do is kind of pull it in maybe this way, okay? Just like that, we'll go back into solid view here. And then I want to press S and then Z and scale it a bit on the Z axis right to about there, okay? And then if we tab back into object mode, you're going to see we have a pretty cool looking piece here. So nothing complicated, really an easy operation to do, okay? So now what I want to do is I want to make a little bit more detail on this entire model. So I'm going to go into the front view. I'll just press the tilde key and choose front. Um, actually, let's go into the right view instead, right there. Sometimes you can get confused between the front and the right. Just try both. And this is the angle we're going to be looking at it from, okay? So what I want to do here is use something called a Boolean. And a Boolean is nothing more than taking an object and cutting a piece out of another object. It's really quite simple. So I'm going to press Shift A, go to Mesh, and then Cube. This is where we can add in a bunch of default objects like a cube, a sphere, a plane, things like that. So I'm going to go here to Cube, all right? I'm going to scale it, S and then Z, to scale it on the Z axis, right? S and then Z. Going to move it to right about there. And then if we want to move it up on the Z axis, we can press the G key and then the Z key to move it up. Okay. Now I want to make this a little bit taller, so we can just press S and Z again. We're going to have a much taller object here, right? Really simple. Now I just want to move it a bit towards the front, so I'm just going to grab it with the G key on the X axis. We'll press the X key, and I want to move it right to about here, okay? Now I want to cut a piece out of this piece using this one, so how do we do it? It's really simple. This is where the add-on that we enabled at the beginning of the tutorial comes in handy, the bool tool add-on. So basically, if I want to cut a piece out of this piece using this one, I first want to select the piece I want to cut with, and then I shift click on the piece I want to cut from, okay? So we're going to press Control, Shift, and B on the keyboard. And there's going to be two different types of booleans here. There's going to be an auto boolean and a brush boolean. Do not worry about the auto boolean, just focus on the brush boolean. This is the one I use, okay? Click on the difference button. And what this will do is run a difference boolean, right, on this piece right here. And just like that, we've basically cut out a little piece on top of our model here, cool. And you're gonna see part of this piece is kind of showing through there, but that's okay, that's exactly how I want it. And what we can do now, you're going to notice this turns into like a wire view, which is totally cool. Um, usually what I do with my cutter objects, um, if I'm done moving them around, is I go up here to the collection, right click and choose a new collection, and then I just press the M key and move that to a separate collection. And then you could like rename it to cutters or something if you wanted to. And then you're able to just turn this off and on whenever you want to go back and make some adjustments. Awesome, so now we have a pretty decent looking object so far, right? And if you ever want to, you know, make this cut a bit less tall, you can just go in here to your cutters collection and then press S and then Z and, you know, scale it down and make some adjustments that way if you, uh, if you want to do that. Cool? Alright, awesome. So we're going to hide that cutters collection just to get rid of that and let's continue on. Now, what if we wanted to get this detail over to the other side of the object? How would we do that? Well, in your head, you might be thinking of a mirror. We want to reflect it to the other side, right? So to do that, what we can do with our cutter object right here, we'll turn it back on, is we can add a mirror modifier. Now, how exactly do we add a mirror modifier? What do we do? Well, we just go here with uh, this cutter object selected. What we do is we go here to this little wrench panel, and there's a big list of modifiers in here. And a lot of beginners get really discouraged when they see this and you know, think it's too intimidating. To be honest with you, I maybe use like five of these at most, and I've been using Blender for like 10 years. Um, so most of the time, I'm not using more than like the mirror. Uh, sometimes I use Solidify and a few others, but we're not going to discuss those in this tutorial. But don't worry about all these different ones because most of the time, you're not going to even use them. So just pretend there's only like five in here, okay? So we're going to go here to the mirror modifier, all right? 
And what I want to do is I want to mirror this across the X axis. Now you might be wondering what exactly happened when I added in that mirror modifier, it just kind of like messed it up. And that's okay because I'm going to show you exactly what happened. So what we need to do is turn on this bisect option, okay? And then we need to turn on this flip option. Sometimes it just messes up, and if it ever does that, you just turn these two on and it'll fix it, so don't worry too much about that. But it's still not mirroring to the other side. Why not? Well, that's because Blender doesn't know where we want to mirror from. Blender's like, okay, you have a mirror modifier here, but what in the world do you want me to mirror over? Right now it's just mirroring over itself, and I know that because the origin point is in the middle of this object. If we move the origin point, then Blender will mirror over that origin point. And since it's, you know, right here, it's simply mirroring over itself. So if I right click, set the origin to the 3D cursor, which is this little thing in the middle, you're gonna see it moves the origin. And you're gonna see it messed up again. And just uh, to fix that, you can just turn off the flip option. To be honest with you, sometimes the flip option works, sometimes it doesn't. Usually I just turn this off and on and see which one gets the job done. In this case, we need to make sure flip is turned off and bisect is turned on, okay? So just like that, we've basically mirrored that effect over to the other side, which is awesome. So now at this point, I can just go ahead and hide this cutters collection, and we have a pretty cool looking object here. Awesome, so now I wanna show you one of the most important fundamentals of hard surface modeling, and it only requires a few clicks, okay? So if you look at any object in your room, maybe the table you're working on, maybe your keyboard or your wallet, um, or your watch, whatever, you're going to notice that the edges of these pieces, although they're very sharp, they do have a slight smoothness around them. It's kind of, if you, you know, if you rub your hand on your table, you're not going to cut yourself like you would with a knife blade because it is slightly rounded on there. And we want to imitate that effect here in Blender because right now we have a perfectly sharp edge and that's not very appealing. So what we want to do is make the edges a little bit rounder. And we can do this by using a bevel modifier, okay? So I'm just going to select this piece right here. We're going to go to add modifier, and then we're going to go here to bevel, okay? And you're going to see it kind of worked, but it really didn't. Um, so first things first, whenever I use the bevel modifier, I use three segments. Um, unless I'm making game assets, but that's a whole different story. Um, in general, though, I am using three segments for my bevels, all right? Next thing I do is I turn on this hard and normals button right here. Reason being is because without it, you get these weird shading issues. If I turn this on, you're going to see those go away. And then the last thing I do is I hold the shift key, click on the amount here in the slider, and then just drag to the left until the bevel is really, really tiny like that. And you're going to see if we turn the bevel off and turn it on, look how much nicer the edges look. Not only is it rounder, it also reflects the light a lot nicer. So regardless of the model, I'd say in most cases you should be using a bevel modifier because it mimics a real world object and simply looks better, all right? And that's all you have to do here. Um, one thing you could also do, let me show you just uh, in case you're curious. If I zoom into the corner here, notice how the corner is kind of like a triangle. See that? It's like a triangle. To make that round off a bit nicer, you can go here to the geometry panel and under miter outer, you can change this to an arc, and that'll just make it look a bit nicer as well. All right, awesome. So I wanna go ahead and I wanna make sure that this piece is beveled as well. So I could add a bevel modifier here, and if I were to do that, you know, we're just gonna to have to go through the same exact process as before. But notice that we don't have a bevel that fuses this mesh here to this one. Notice right here, we don't have a bevel going around. And that's because these pieces are not physically connected together. This is a separate piece, and this is a separate piece. So these are not fused together. So if you want to fuse these together, kind of like a piece of metal or something, what you can do is do something called a union. You join them together. Um, there's the join operation, which is Control J, and that doesn't work the same as the union operation. So we want to run a union boolean. And to do that is very easy. We're going to select this one, shift click on this one, and then we'll press control shift and B and choose union. 
and that's going to union it together. Now you're probably wondering, why is the shading weird? And that's because if we scroll down a bit here in the modifiers panel, you're going to see we have a boolean. That's our first boolean for the sides here. And then we have our bevel, and then we have the third boolean. So right now, the bevel has already finished running before this boolean operation occurred. But what happens if we switch the order? What's going to happen is it's going to run all the booleans first and then run the bevel at the end. So that way we get that nice fusion there. So the order of these modifiers is incredibly important. If you don't have them in the right orientation, you're going to see you get different results. For example, if I drag this one down, you're going to see the bevel does not affect it and we get a few other issues. So make sure the modifier stack is in order. In most situations, your bevel is going to be at the bottom, so just a good point of reference. If something's not working, put your bevel at the bottom and it should be fine. Cool, so I'm going to go ahead and hide this piece because since we used a Boolean operation to perform that union, we now have a separate outline here. We can just go ahead and press the H key to hide it. All right, so this thing is looking fantastic. I definitely like the progress so far. Now what I want to do is just make a bit more visual interest in here because right now it's just a little bit too boring for my liking. One thing I do want to mention though is that if we try to go into edit mode with the tab key, you're going to see that some of the stuff disappears. And that's because these boolean operations have not been applied so we can only see them in object mode. If we want to also see it in edit mode, then we need to apply them here. So as long as you're in object mode, you can go here, click the drop down menu and then choose apply. Click the drop down menu again and then choose apply. And now all those changes will be accessible here in edit mode, okay? Now what I wanna do is go back into the right hand view and run yet another Boolean operation. So I'm gonna add in a cube, shift A, mesh and then cube. We're gonna scale this down, scale it on the Z and then just move this right to about here. And I want to make sure this is a really long one, so we're going to press S and then X and just kind of scale this a little bit like that. Makes sense. And then what I want to do is I want to shift click on this object and then run another Boolean operation. So we're going to press Control, Shift, and B and then choose Difference like that. Awesome. So now what I can do is I can select this cutter right here. And just like we did for the, um, the cut right here, I want to mirror this to the other side. So I'm just going to add a mirror modifier. We'll go here. Now I want to mirror over the Y axis. The green axis is the Y axis and the red one is the X. So I'm going to turn off the X, turn on the Y. We're going to choose um, bisect and that should be the only one we need to turn on. Cool. So now we can actually see it. And then what I want to do is reset the origin to that 3D cursor in the center. So that way it tells Blender, hey, I want you to mirror over this point. So we're just going to right click, set origin to 3D cursor like that. And you're going to see that the bevel is not actually getting affected right here. So make sure, like I said, your Boolean comes before the bevel there. Awesome. Okay, so this thing is looking pretty cool. I want to go ahead and select this cutter here and press the H key to hide it. So I want to do um, one more little thing here and then I want to take a brief moment to explain a few things that I think will be incredibly beneficial in your 3D journey. So we'll mention that in a second, but for now I want to make like a little detail down here. So I'm going to press the tilde key and go back into the right hand view and we're going to make a little detail down here. So just like we did before, I'm going to press Shift A and then add in a mesh cube. And we're going to scale down this cube with the S key. And then grab it on the Z axis, so G and Z. And put it right to, I don't know, right about here should be fine. And then when I want to move it on the X axis, so G and then X right to about here. And then just like we've been doing, I want to run a difference Boolean on this piece. So we're going to select this one, shift click on this one, control shift and B and then choose difference here from brush boolean. And now we're going to have a cut down here. Now to make this a bit more visually interesting, check this out. What I could do is I could select this cutter piece right here, tab into edge mode, and maybe I could, I don't know, select this edge right here, shift click on this edge right here, 
and then select these two while holding shift as well. And then maybe this one. Okay, so check this out. Now I can bevel all five of these edges right here by pressing control B and you can scroll up or down and you're gonna see I get a much more interesting looking design just by doing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this and then press the H key to hide it. And you're gonna see we still have some like flat edges right here. And the reason that's occurring is because you need to make sure that whenever you add in a cutter object, you smooth the cutter object, okay? Because right now it's not smoothed out. So if we right click and then choose shade smooth, you're gonna see, um, well, it kind of worked. And the next problem is that we don't have this Boolean above the bevel. So if we just drag this up here, you're going to see much better. You're going to see for some reason when I did that, the bevels here just disappeared. The bevels are gone. And let me show you how to fix that. We're going to go here to the bevel modifier and under the geometry panel, turn off the clamp overlap button. Without getting into too much detail, the clamp overlap um, option here prevents you from getting like overlapping geometry and you can kind of see we have that right here see that it's like kind of like glitched so if a glitch like that ever occurs or blenders like hey we have like overlapping geometry occurring this clamp overlap button will prevent that from happening but it'll also remove your bevels so basically this clamp overlap feature is basically like a just a diagnosing issue you can figure out where the issues are occurring and then kind of manage them so I want to keep this turned off for right now and you can see the issue is like right here it's kind of acting up and this is actually going to be very confusing if you don't know where to look and let me show you how to fix it I don't know why it's set up like this don't ask me um, if we go here to this um this piece right here you're gonna see for this boolean the solver is set to exact I'm not gonna get into the difference between fast and exact but in 99% of cases you can just use the fast option and that's going to fix everything so change this to fast change this one to fast i don't know why it's set to exact by default i wish it wasn't but it is so just change that to fast and the problem will be eradicated and uh, you can continue on with your modeling cool so i'm going to go ahead and hide this piece and you're going to see we have a pretty cool little you know design down there now the last little detail I want to add down here is something called a slice operation and I think you're really going to like this one so uh, check this out. What I'm going to do is go back into the tilde key to the right view and then I'm going to add in one more cube so shift A we're going to go to mesh and then cube. We're going to scale down the cube and then move it down this way. Cool. So now what I want to do is I want to move this cube out here just a little bit and I want to tab into edge mode and select these two edges. Now with these two edges selected, I want to press control and B to bevel it, okay? And we're gonna bevel it to, I don't know, let me go back into the right hand view. And so we can actually see the other piece. I'm gonna turn on wireframe because I wanna make these bevels right here roughly the same size as these in terms of roundness. So we're gonna press control B here in wireframe and do something like that. We'll just go back into solid view. Cool, so now what I want to do is I want to shift click on this piece. We'll press control shift B, and this is gonna be a new operation called the slice operation, okay? If we go here to slice, check out what happens. You're gonna get this really cool little panel going around it. Now we can't actually see the bevel here. Notice it's just like a, it's just flat. We can't see the bevel. So much like we've been doing, we need to make sure that that Boolean operation right here for the slice is above the bevel modifier. We can click and drag here. And notice this is actually a separate piece. So we need to go to this piece as well and do the same thing. We're gonna go here and click and drag above the bevel. And now we're gonna have a bevel over there as well. Cool. And then we can just go ahead and um, we can shade it smooth and then press the H key to hide it. And now we have a pretty cool looking detail down here. And just to emphasize that detail, what we could actually do, actually before we do that, I just noticed an issue down here. We need to make sure that we change that solver to fast to fix that. And if it's still not working, then perhaps, um, actually we have to change it over here as well. There we go. Cool, so 
If it was still acting up, you might just need to move this down a little bit because sometimes if it's like too close, it'll start acting up. So in that case, you would just move it down just a bit more. But usually, in most cases, it's the solver issue right here. Set it to fast. All right, so we can go ahead and hide this piece. And what I want to do is kind of make this pop a bit more. But before I do that, this is a little bit too high. So let me just um, undo that with Control Z. And then we can move this down a bit on the Z axis right to about there, okay? Cool. So if you press the H key, you can just hide it or turn on this button right here. Awesome. So now what I want to do is make this area pop a bit more so we can see the difference in pieces. So what we can do here is add a new material, and it looks like it already has one. You're going to notice we have a material for this piece, and we have a material for this piece. Well, I want to have a separate material for this one. So I'm just going to click on this minus button, and then click the plus button to add a new one. You could also just click this number right here to add a duplicate. It doesn't really matter. But anyways, what I want to do is I want to scroll all the way down here to viewport display and change the color to some sort of gray color here like that and you're gonna see the entire thing actually got affected see that that's because both of these pieces have the same material alright so I'm just gonna select this one and click the drop down menu and change back to that default material and now you're probably wondering well no matter what I do it's overriding them on both and that's because this is basically sharing the same data. What we need to do here is first of all go to this Boolean operation for this piece and apply it. We'll click the drop down and apply it and you're gonna see it doesn't let us apply it. And that's because Blender is saying I know you ran a slice right here but I still don't know which one is which. And it's kinda confusing, I know, but basically we just have to tell Blender, hey, these are two separate pieces, alright? So we're gonna go here to this panel click on this button right here and that'll actually take care of it for us. So now we can actually go in here to this um, slice operation, the third one down, click on the apply button and now we have a completely separate piece right here. We could even apply these other two booleans here as well and there we go. Pretty cool. So now if we go here we should be able to give this the material 001 without any issues. So now we kind of have like a bit of a visual difference here. We have the bottom one right here and the upper area is just completely gray. So it looks pretty interesting. So if you're a beginner, one thing I want to mention that a lot of beginners, I see it all the time, a lot of beginners overlook is the importance of visual design. And basically visual design is just the art of making stuff look good, okay? You might notice that you could see really simple pieces made by other artists and they just look amazing and then you see other pieces and they don't look so amazing and the reason that is is because visual design is what you know makes human brains think wow this looks good and if you can master the art of visual design your models are going to look incredible you're going to be able to get a good portfolio get clients get jobs build a following and if you just simply master visual design yes it takes time but if you you know get those key elements down your artworks are going to be amazing and it is better to master it early on than to realize you were never practicing it um, for years and that was my problem I never understood the importance of visual design and I wasted a lot of years not uh, not learning it so whether you're a beginner or not now is the time to start learning visual design and we actually have a free PDF talking about our five favorite design elements if you want to pick that up on our website you can just um, click the link in the top of the description. It's a free PDF discusses some of our favorite elements of visual design that you can basically use in your projects immediately. So pick up that PDF. I think you'll like it and um, you can kind of refer to that as you model. So I just wanted to discuss that because a lot of people overlook the importance of visual design because it's just um, it's not something you really think about when you're learning how to model. But if you can learn how to model and also think about visual design in your head, your artwork is going to be so much higher, you know, a few months in compared to someone who's just learning how to model. And when I make these tutorials, everything I'm placing, all these elements here are very strategically placed, okay? So I'm not placing things randomly. You should never feel as if you're just randomly placing details because every detail 
should be strategically placed. And that is why I say to focus a lot on visual design and study how I place the details, study how the shapes balance each other, things like this. It's so important, but it does take some time to get used to, so do not get discouraged. You will eventually begin to understand it, okay? So let's go ahead and press the tilde key and go into the right view. And I want to add in a cube here. Shift A, mesh and cube. Scale it down right to about here. And then I want to press S and Z and scale this up. Move it down a bit. Maybe something like that. And then press a G and then X and move it to, I don't know, right about here. We could scale it up a bit more and maybe move it up a bit. So I want the top of this um, little detail right here to be right below the bottom of these details right here. It's going to provide a really nice balance in shapes. Okay, so um, like I said, we want to make sure when we scale something in object mode, we always apply that scale. So I'm going to press Control A and then apply the scale. Okay, and then um, I can basically go to, if I tab into edge mode, I can go to this edge and then shift click on this edge and then maybe give it like a really small bevel right here like that. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to shift click on this piece right here and then control shift B and run a difference boolean like that. Now I also want that boolean to run down through here as well. So we're going to have to select this one again, shift click on this piece since it's a separate one and then control shift and B and we'll choose difference and maybe what we need to do here is scale this um, cutter just a bit more so it goes all the way down through there and then perhaps we can move it a bit on the x-axis so it's not as deep inside the model there so I don't know right to about here we can press the H key to hide it looks kinda cool but I think I want to move this down just a bit more right to about there and there we go. And then maybe we could scale this just a bit more on the y-axis. So S and Y, just so that way it's not as skinny right here. So S and Y, maybe to about there. And then we're going to have a pretty clean looking result on this side here. Cool. Now, if you want to mirror this object to the other side to get the same exact detail, you're more than welcome to do that. So once again, if you want to mirror that, we just go in here to the modifiers panel add a mirror modifier and I want to mirror over the x-axis so by default it is set to X and then I want to right click set the origin to the 3d cursor and you're gonna see it mirrored over to the other side without issue so we can go ahead and hide that okay so we're just about done here I really like how this looks what I do want to do however is apply all of these different booleans right here so I'm gonna click on this we're going to apply all the booleans here and for this boolean, make sure it is above that one so that way we can actually see our bevel and then apply that boolean as well. And then make sure all the booleans on this one are applied. Um, this boolean needs to go up here like that. We can apply it and there we go. So just to make the colors a little bit more visually appealing, what I want to do is tab into face mode here, select this face right here, go into material mode and I want to add a new material, this little plus button, and we're going to choose that second material here from the drop down and click on assign. And that way we kind of have like a cool little, you know, gray material kind of going up the model like that. And then what we could do just to make it, you know, even more balanced, you can also use elements of visual design when it comes to color as well. It's so, so powerful what visual design can do for you. So I'm going to tab into face mode and I'm going to give this one and this one that second material. We'll click on Assign. Tab back into Object Mode and see how that looks. And you're going to see it does look kind of cool. We could even do it for, we'll just tab into Face Mode again. We could even do it for that face and hold Shift and do it for these two faces as well. Give that a nice gray color. And there we go. So that's it for the tutorial guys. I wanted to make this as simple as possible, as straightforward as possible, and just show you whether you're a beginner or still kind of getting used to Blender that, you know, modeling, hard surface modeling 
it's not very difficult to get started with. You can just learn the basics in like a day, and I hopefully I presented that well here. So once again, guys, if you want to grab our design PDF to give you a few ideas, there's a link in the top of the description. And that's it for this video. I really hope it helped you guys out. I absolutely love making these tutorials. And if you have any feedback for me, maybe you want me to speed up or slow down or do a different tutorial, let me know. The only way I can improve is through your comments. So thanks for watching. Drop a thumbs up and a subscription if it helped. And I'll see you in the next video.